Hello, everyone. My name is Dashanj, Dashanj Prajapati, and I'm an Amazon data science student at Columbia University. Uh, I also do part time at Northeast Big Data Hub. And today I'm going to talk about R. Um, specifically, what is R? Why do you need to know R? What's the difference between Python and R? What is R Studio and what are the benefits of R Studio? And finally, we will give you a quick demonstration of how to install R and R Studio. Also, take a look into what's an R Studio. So, what is R? Uh, R is a R is just like any other programming language like C, C++, Java, or Python, but unlike those, it is specifically designed for statistical analysis and data visualization. Uh, it was first created by Ross Ehaka and Robert Gentleman at the University of Auckland, New Zealand. It was named R after these creators. Um, why do you need to know R? So in the market, you will find other statistical analysis software like Stata, SPSS, although you might need to look into R because of these three reasons. The first being R is open source. So um, obviously, since R is open source, it is free to use. On the other hand, uh, you have SPSS and Stata, which are expensive to use. Uh, moreover, being open source, R also has a huge community, and this community they contribute, you know, uh, thousands of package, um, thousands and ten thousands of package. So you can you are free to use those packages, and um, you know, in Stata, on the other hand, it only allows you to use the built-in functions. So yeah. Second is reproducibility. So in R, if you want to get the same results, you can read on the same code. You can get the same visualization or the same analysis. Uh, while, you know, if you use other softwares which are based on drag and drop uh, user interfaces, you need to repeat the same steps again and again to get the same results, which can be cumbersome. Um, so finally, if nothing, um, yet impresses you or influences you to know R, then uh, this should be, you know, one of the most selling point, like graphical capabilities in R is, is the best. From static to interactive graphics, R has actually one of the best uh, graphic libraries, like example, ggplot. And yeah, so many people learn R just to, you know, to do some amazing visualizations. So yeah, uh, Python versus R. So Python and R both are programming languages. So uh, many data science aspirants or even you know uh, people aspiring to be a professional in similar field, uh, they often wonder whether how should they start programming? Like, do should they learn Python or should they learn R? So let me help you with this. So the, this decision, it majorly depends on what your application is, uh, what kind of work you're doing. Uh, R was built by statisticians for statisticians, and it leans more on the statistical models and specialized analytics side. So uh, yeah, if you're doing statistical analysis or, or even data visualization, then I would suggest you learn R initially then Python is something, you know, uh, it's a general purpose language. You can do everything from software engineering to web applications to data science, you know, data analysis, training machine learning models, data visualization, and so on. It is built for everything. But uh, usually Python is more intuitive to those who have a, you know, um, background in computer programming or has like a computer science degree. So yeah, so that's it for Python and R. So if you have heard of an integrated development environment, it is kind of a software or, a, or like a code editor, which makes, you know, your life easier while coding in a particular language. It offers you some amazing features like syntax highlighting, code completion, and there are different, you know, amazing features depending on the language and the software. So similarly, R also has an IDE, which is called R Studio. It is free open source, and it also has the same exciting features along with other tools like plotting, debugging, uh, history, and so on. 
So when you open our studio, you will be, you will, you know, uh, encounter a similar screen. And uh, the screen is mainly divided into four parts. The one on the top left is called source pane. The one on the bottom left is called the console pane. The one on the top right is called the environment or history pane. The one on the bottom right is called files, plots, packages, and help pane. So the one on the top left that is source pane is where you usually write your R code. And this code is usually returned in an R script. Uh, with an, which has an extension of .r, while you can also write an R code inside an R markdown, which has an extension of .rmd. And additionally, uh, uh, you can also, you know, view your data in this pane, which is similar to viewing data in the Excel sheet. Second is the one on the bottom left. It is called the console pane. This, pain, this is the pane where your code gets executed. When you see a prompt, which is the greater than sign, it, it, it usually means that R is ready to you know, run a new code. You can directly type your code into this console, or you can you know, run from the source pane. So yeah, apart from console tab, there's also one terminal tab, which you know, if you want to execute some system level commands uh, like ls to list all the files in the directory and so on, then you can use a terminal tab too. The one on the top right is called the environment or history pane. So environment pane, uh, whenever you initialize a variable or object, it, it actually gets stored in your memory. And one way to, you know, to know whether this variable exists is through the environment pane. If you see uh, your variable inside the environment pane, it means that you have created that variable. And uh, in addition, you can also get some um, other information about variables like the structure, the levels, if it is a factor and so on. So yeah, that's for the environment pane. There's also a history tab. So just like the name suggests, uh, every code that you run gets stored in the history tab. So you can just go back. Um, you can go back to the code that you know you have run previously just to give you know track back. Finally, the one on the bottom right is called the files, plots, packages, or help pane. Uh, the files tab in the set actually lists all the directory, all the files in your current working directory. Then uh, when you, whenever you plot a graph, your plots are visualized on the plot, the plots are displayed on the plots tab. Um, then uh, you can also import, install, or manage your packages through the packages pane. Finally, there's a help tab. Uh, so in this tab, if you, uh, you can check out the documentation of a function that you don't know, or even a library or examples of the function. So yeah, finally, uh, so here are two links that you can use um, to install. So first link, it actually redirects you to the official R page. Okay, here you can click one of these three links depending on your operating system, then click on base download our 4.1.24 windows and it will download. I already have it installed, so I don't need to download it. Once you download this, you can, okay, once you download this, you need to download our studio, which is the integrated development environment of R. Download our studio. You should download the free version and desktop rather than the server. So download the free download for Windows. You also have options to download it for other operating systems below here. Since I have already installed it, I'll cancel the download. So let me show you what our studio looks like. So this is the uh, this is the screen of our studio. So as you can see, the one on the top left is the source pane. The one on the bottom left is the console pane. The one on the top right is the environment or history pane, the one on the bottom right files, plots, packages, help pane. So here in the source pane, you can write your code in a script file. So this is a script file called temp.r. Uh, let me write a code to just add two numbers, b 
yeah, the symbol that you see over here is actually uh, an assignment operator. You can also write equals to if you are familiar with that. Then c equals to a plus b. Okay. Now, I think if you want to run this code, you can press Control and Enter to run one line at a time. Control enter B equals to three. As you can see, uh, whenever you run a code or uh, initialize the variable, the variables are being you know displayed in the environment tab. Then C equals to A plus B. Okay, let's see what the value of C is inside the console tab. So as you can see, you can write your code inside the console tab. If it's just one line, then it's convenient to do so. So two plus three, five, that makes sense. If you want to find some maximum uh, of two values, two comma four, then if you want to plot something, let's say, uh, so empty cars is a default data inside our environment. Let's plot the empty cars. Okay, over here in the right hand side, you can see the plot of empty cars here each. It's a, I think it's a scatter plot of uh, a pair wise scatter plot of each features. So yeah, um, that's it for our studio. Yeah, that's it for the, yep. Thank you so much.